Hey guys, it's A Paul, and welcome back to my channel. We are here with another talking CJ. And this one is a type of plea that some people are able to use that I thought was really interesting, and it's called the Alfred plea. And let's just do a little bit of background on pleas first. Before this plea was recognized, there was three different ways you could plea in a trial. You could plead guilty. This is a defendant admitting guilt and being able to just not have a trial and move on with sentencing. There's not guilty, which means they're not admitting guilt at all, and we'll move on into a trial, and then no contest. And they aren't exactly accepting guilt, but is considered guilty through the court system, and we'll just be moving on to sentencing. And according to the Supreme Court, pleas have to be voluntary, knowing, and intelligent to make. And a judge actually will make you affirm whatever you are pleading one or two times to make sure that you are absolutely aware of what you are choosing. So let's talk about the case that changed the course in these plea deals. It was North Carolina versus Alford, and it's based on a man named Henry Alford. Henry had picked up a possible prostitute named Nathaniel Young, and they went back to Nathaniel's house where they had gotten into an argument. So Alford ended up leaving, but after he left, Nathaniel Daniel heard a knock at the door thinking it was Henry. He went to open it and was killed right there at his front door. Henry was charged with first degree murder in 1963 because he was the last person pretty much known with Nathaniel. Everyone just believed it was him. His defense lawyer really didn't do him any favors at all. He questioned all the witnesses except for the one that could have cleared Alfred's name. And all the witnesses that were questioned were saying that Henry was guilty. And the police officer even testified that Henry took the gun from his home, went and killed someone, and then came back and told his household about it. And for this, he could possibly receive capital punishment, which meant the death penalty was on the table. And at this time, the death penalty was commonly used in North Carolina. But if he pled guilty to this crime he didn't commit, he could possibly just get life in prison and just avoid the death penalty altogether. But he wasn't guilty, so he didn't want to admit guilt. So the prosecution and him came to an agreement that he would plead guilty to second degree murder in 1970. And he told the court he was only doing this to avoid the death penalty. He was not guilty. And since Henry pled guilty, Guilty, he only received 30 years in prison compared to the death penalty or a life sentence. And because of this, we now know the Alford plea. And the Alford plea is a guilty plea, but you are still saying you are absolutely innocent. You are just pleading guilty because you have weighed your consequences. And most of the time, people use an Alford plea if there is substantial evidence that points to you. So such as all those witnesses that said they saw Henry there. It wasn't necessarily true, but it was damning evidence. And people also use the Alford plea if they can avoid harsher sentences, such as Henry Alford avoiding the death penalty by pleading guilty to second degree murder for 30 years. And no contest and Alford plea are actually pretty similar, but there are just a few differences. With an Alford plea, you are accepting whatever punishment, even if you are innocent. But with no contest, you are not accepting the punishment. Another reason for the Alford plea is if you really don't have recollection of the situation that brought you there, whether you had maybe drank too much, you're suffering amnesia, or maybe there was a head injury involved that you lost your memory. There are a few different names that the Alford plea is referred to as. There is the Alford Alfred guilty plea, the Alfred doctrine, best interest plea, and in West Virginia, the Kennedy plea. You can use it in almost all U.S. federal and state court systems, but there are a few states that don't allow it, 
which are Indiana, Michigan, and New Jersey, and also in the courts of the U.S. Armed Forces. And once giving your Alford plea, the court most likely will immediately pronounce you guilty and move on with sentencing. So in 2000, about 17% of state inmates and 5% of federal inmates submitted either using an Alford plea or no contest plea. And this was just able to show that state court systems are a lot more accepting to those type of pleas than federal systems. And by October 2008, the United States Department of Justice defined the Alford plea as the defendant maintains their innocence with respect to the charge of which he or she offers to plead guilty. And what was the aftermath to Henry Alford pleading this way? Alford appealed and requested a new trial multiple times. He made the point that he felt that he was very much pushed into pleading guilty because his lawyer figured he was going to get the death penalty. He claimed that his lawyer really used fear and coercion to get him to plead this way. But the Supreme Court of North Carolina ruled that he very much knowingly and voluntarily and intellectually chose this way to plea. He did petition after this for a writ of habeas corpus in the United States District Court for the Middle District of North Carolina. It actually did well in the initial ruling, but the United States the Court of Appeals quickly shot it down. And Henry just claimed that if he didn't plead guilty, his lawyer said they were going to gas him for it. And Henry Alford actually ended up dying in prison in 1975 for something that he just didn't do. And final little details about the Alford plea you should know in case you for some god awful reason have to use it. It will show up as a criminal conviction on your record. It will 100% still show you're guilty of whatever these crimes are. And it'll show on background checks such as for employment or housing. And the only way to get these off your criminal record are by sealing the records or getting them expunged which can be extremely difficult in some cases. So really you're in a rock and a hard place if you ever have to use this plea. And that is all I have on the Alford plea. I think this plea deal is so interesting and if you go and look at cases that have used it, it's just really unfair fortunate circumstances for those people. And go ahead and leave your comments below on what you think of the Alford plea. And also leave in the comments any other suggestions you have for talking CJs. But thank you guys so much for watching. And if you haven't already, please go back and watch my Unsolved in West Virginia series. There is going to be a season two soon, so we need to catch up. Also, like and subscribe for me and hit that notification button. That way you're notified the next time I upload. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.